Good evening and welcome to the Coon Rapids City Council meeting for Tuesday, March 7th, 2017. If you could please rise and join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Councilmember Kraskoviak. Here. Councilmember Kicker. Here. Councilmember Demmer. Here. Councilmember Geisler. Here. Councilmember Johnson. Here. Councilmember Wells. Here. Mayor Cook. Here. Thank you. First item on our agenda this evening is to adopt the agenda. Your Honor. Councilmember Demmer. I move to adopt the agenda, striking item number seven. Second. Motion by Demmer, second by Geisler to adopt the agenda, uh, uh, striking item seven. Any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And the very first item on our agenda is very exciting. Citizen Life Saving Awards. Police Chief Brad Wise. It's here. Mayor, Council, thank you very much. Yes, it is an exciting night for us. And it's actually something that hasn't happened in a, in a few years where we had the opportunity to recognize some of our citizens. Um, for their life-saving efforts. You know, I talk a lot about public safety in Coon Rapids where uh, both the police department and the fire department provide a service to the community, but really the community is a big part of our life-saving efforts where we look out for each other, we care about one another, and we do the best we can to make a difference. And in this case tonight, I actually um, have two separate incidents that I need to talk about um, because we had people um, that happened to be in our town that stepped up in a time of need and um, and changed the direction for somebody's life uh, forever in a positive way and it's and it's a big thing you know of course we in Coon Rapids have been having uh, been working our heart safe program for a number of years and the mantra of the heart safe program is don't wait for the help be the help well it's more than just um, cardiac arrest where that applies so the first uh, scenario that I'd like to discuss uh, is involving Toma, Toma Craft, and if I have you, sir, stand up and stand next to me because I want to uh, tell this to you, Council. So I'll, I'll wait, I'll, I'll read this story is that um, on February 17th, 2017, just after 7 p.m., officers were dispatched to Chick-fil-A at 3590 River Rapids Drive Northwest, where a 55-year-old woman um, by the name of Jer Jerry Engstrand uh, was found to be choking with a total airway obstruction. A construction former from Elk River, Toma Craft, who's standing here to my left, who had recently been trained in first aid, leaped into action and performed a domino thrust, the Heimlich maneuver, um, dislodging the food item from Jerry's throat and allowed her to breathe again. If it were not for the immediate life-saving efforts of Mr. Craft, there would have been a very different outcome. He clearly saved the life of another person and he thereby has earned a Citizen's Award of Merit. So, Mr. Kraft. Thank you. So, it's, it's not hard to imagine that the loved ones of Jerry, um, unfortunately, Jerry couldn't be here. But the, the change in trajectory for her life and, and that of her family members is immeasurable. And he has a lot to be proud of. And I'm glad that we got the chance to recognize him. Um, the second incident, again, coincidentally, in February 6th. And in this case, I need a couple of people to stand up here with me. Uh, one is Tanitha Johnson, if you could step up and stand next to me from the audience. And then the second person is Denise Clint. So Denise Clint, if you could come stand next to me, too. Uh, of course, Denise Clint might be a name that's familiar <laughs> to many people in and around um, the city of Coon Rapids, uh, but it's a remarkable event that we need to discuss. But before I mention the incident in particular, though, I want a couple of, um, of uh, first responders to come up here, too, to stand behind us, because it's not just the incident itself. Um, the, the metaphor I use is sort of like a relay race, where First person needs to pick up the ton and run and then pass it off and then it ultimately leads to life saving. So I need Officer Dan Freiberg to step up and stand behind me here. And I need firefighters Joe Caminati, Joe Gottwalt, Greg Wester, and Christian Warby if they could all stand up here and stand behind me also.
And Mr. Mr. Mayor and Council, these um, these folks that are behind me then represent the team that uh, saved a life, and I'd like to tell you about it. So, on February 6, 2006, 2017, just after 10 a.m., officers were dispatched to Midwest Disability at 408 Northdale Boulevard Northwest, where a 29-year-old female employee, Tanitha Johnson, had collapsed, and it was initially reported as a seizure. Former city council member Denise Clint, who works at this firm, immediately jumped into action as she recognized that Tanitha wasn't having a seizure. In fact, she was suffering from a cardiac arrest. Uh, Denise Clint began CPR on her coworker for several minutes before rescue workers arrived on the scene and found the victim, indeed, and confirmed the victim had been suffering from a sudden cardiac arrest. Emergency responders took over CPR and also performed one defibrillation procedure the victim regained a pulse and was transported by ambulance to Mercy Hospital. Um, she was recovering at home, and now just a matter of a few weeks here, she's standing immediately to my left with an enormous smile on her face. <laughs> um, it, it's a miracle. You're, you're, you're witnessing a miracle. She later learned from doctors that her heart stopped due to untreated high blood pressure. If not for the immediate life-saving efforts of Mrs. Clint, there would have been a very different outcome. And in fact, the people who recognize this outcome are here with her. Uh, Tanitha brought a number of her family members and imagine what would be different today had Denise Clint not made this intervention. Yeah, actually, you're welcome to come up here. This is the love, this is the love we're talking about. So Denise Clint clearly saved the life of another person, thereby earning this citizen's award of merit. So thank you. One second. Now, now, and as I mentioned, so we have, you, it's not hard to picture the scene, this person down, and, and I want to talk about HeartSafe in particular. Uh, the city council as a whole, uh, just a handful of years ago, took the um, course that was offered by Officer Brian Plotz to learn hands-only CPR and the use of a defibrillator. And um, we all heard the story from Denise as she told it on the news where she stepped in and began her CPR and the song was playing in her ear, the Stayin' Alive, as she's doing her chest. <laughs> <laughs> but Denise got over that hump and the same was true of, of Toma, where it's you saw a person in need and you went, I have to intervene. And, and being able to mentally convince yourself I can do something here and begin doing it is the biggest deal. They were the help. They were the help, and it's a lot to be proud of for both of these people. Now, Denise went a long way, but eventually the first responders arrived, and Officer Plotz um, has a special heart safe recognition for the first responders who, Denise passed the baton off to them. Um, Tanitha has no memory of these people. <laughs> um, but these, these people took the baton until they got her in the ambulance and then assisted as she went to the hospital for the, the final life-saving measure that led to the great outcome that's here today. So, Brian, you have a um, coin that you want to pass out, the heart-safe coin. So, this is a coin that is strictly reserved for somebody who saved somebody's life who was in cardiac arrest. So this is a person that these people found clinically dead and through the use of CPR and defibrillation, brought that person back and, and that person and more importantly their family is all standing up with us here today so I want you guys to think about who did these people save was it one person sure but at the end of the day look behind me this is a daughter these are sisters these are mothers these are this is a family that's kept whole because Denise quarterback the situation I use football he uses track <laughs> <laughs> she quarterbacked that that situation and bought the time for these guys to get there and do their job. So 5% of the people survived their cardiac arrest, meaning only 5% of the rescuers out there actually earn this coin, and it's my pleasure to present that to everyone. Starting with Denise.
<laughs> Fumble. Drop the baton. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Mayor, thank you again, everyone. Thank you. So while you are up there, or while Officer Plotz is up there, we need to talk about the next item, right? It's, um, I don't know if it's irony or what it is exactly, but um, I think Officer Plotz would like to tell you about the next item himself. <laughs> well, we're going back to England. <laughs> uh, since our last trip in uh, last February of uh, 2016, uh, we went over there in February 2016 to start England's first heart safe program. Uh, it's generated enough interest and enough steam where they've uh, invited us back to meet with local politicians, <laughs> emergency service uh, uh, leaders, and, and the community at large to really solidify and get their program up and running the way it is uh, here in Coon Rapids. So really excited about this trip in uh, April, and we're going to just take a little piece of Coon Rapids and plant it over there uh, in the United Kingdom. Well, Officer Plotz, let me read the proclamation here and see what's maybe covered here, and then maybe if there's any blanks you want to fill in yet. Um, this is a, uh, um, a proclamation in support and partnership with Worcester, England, Whereas, the Coon Rapids Heart Safe program has trained nearly 15,000 people to not only recognize the signs of sudden cardiac arrest, but also in the use of CPR and automated external defib defibrillators, AEDs, and whereas the Coon Rapids Heart Safe program continually promotes the value of this training and seeks to assist other communities with establishing their own heart safe programs. And whereas Coon Rapids police officer Brian Plotz visited Worcester, England in 2016 to train city employees and businesses and to help Worcester implement their own program. And whereas officer Plotz will again visit Worcester in April, 2017 to continue this unique partnership and Whereas, the City of Coon Rapids would like to extend their support to Officer Plotz and the City of Worcester in continuing this noble effort. Now, therefore, I, Jerry Cook, Mayor of the City of Coon Rapids, on behalf of the City Council and citizens of our city, affirm the City's support to Officer Plotz <coughs> and the City of Worcester in their efforts to establish a heart safe program and to offer them our partnership in pursuing this important program, proclaimed this seventh day of March, 2017. What you looking for? Whereas, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I also notice a lot of new faces on this council uh, that haven't been trained yet. So this is my public challenge to all of you new council members who haven't been trained and you who, you who have to refresh your skills. It's my open invitation to uh, train you guys yet again. That's, uh, that's an excellent idea. And it's, this is a great time to kind of um, re, uh, re not reinvigorate it because the program's going well, but to, uh, to remind folks about the heart safe. When oh. you're trained, you get your card. Not from Brian. No. no. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you didn't give me a card. No, that's, yeah, that's certification. Yeah. No, right. yeah. 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 We're not talking certification, we're talking trained. We're talking boots on the ground, save a life, and uh, it's excellent. Certification has an expiration date. Training lasts a lifetime. We don't certify, we train. Oh. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> 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 All right, we will do that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Next on our agenda. Our Fire Chief John Piper up here. You're up. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, Council, City Staff, and Citizens of Coon Rapids. As Fire Chief, I'd like to take the opportunity this evening to introduce you to our newest career firefighter. The Fire Department takes great pride in the service we provide to the citizens of Coon Rapids. Our mission statement states, the mission of the Coon Rapids Fire Department is to provide efficient services designed to protect lives and property from the adverse effects of fire, medical emergencies, or exposure to dangerous conditions. We pursue this mission with determination and resolve 
with emphasis on dedication, compassion, and constant improvement. To accomplish this mission, we need trained, dedicated, and compassionate personnel. With that, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce you to Joe Gottwald. Joe grew up in Ramsey and graduated from Anoka High School in 2005. His education includes a liberal arts degree at Anoka Ramsey Community College, an AAS in Fire Technology Administration from Lake Superior College, and an AAS in Paramedicine from St. Cloud Technical College. Joe is a paramedic with Alina since 2013. Joe's family consists of his mother, father, and sister. Joe has been a paid on call firefighter here in Coon Rapids since 2012. Now, Joe, you have been chosen and trained to be a firefighter for this organization. In addition to responding to emergencies, your duties are many. As a firefighter, you are responsible to maintain your knowledge, skills, and physical abilities. You're also responsible to provide quality service to our customers. It will be your duty to respond whenever called. Your chiefs, your crew, and the community rely on your abilities and professionalism in the performance of your role as firefighter. I know you will provide many years of excellent service to our city. That said, we now have the formal pinning of Joe's badge number 76, followed by him swearing an oath of office performed by Mayor Jerry Cook. So I'd like to take so I'd like to introduce Joe's mother, Lynn Gottwald, as the person he selected to pin his badge. down in the little bites for us so thank you <laughs> <laughs> all right please repeat after me I Joe Gottwald I Joe Gottwald do solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support the policies and procedures that I will support the policies and procedures of the Coon Rapids Fire Department of the Coon Rapids Fire Department <laughs> I will faithfully, honorably, and to the best of my ability. I will faithfully, honorably, and to the best of my ability. Protect the safety and lives. Protect the safety and lives. Of my fellow fighter, I'm sorry, of my fellow firefighters and citizens. Of my fellow firefighters and citizens. Whose care has been entrusted to me. Whose care has been entrusted to me. So help me God. So help me God. You are now duly sworn as a firefighter for the Coon Rapids Fire Department. Congratulations. Thank you. I don't know, one of those cheaps, one of those lines was still a little bit long, but... Uh, <laughs> I'll shorten it up for next time. All set. It's all you. Right, okay. I would now like to introduce you to our second newest career firefighter, Joe Eisenchang. Joe grew up in Andover and graduated from Andover High School in 2004. He has been a resident of Coon Rapids for over a decade. His education includes Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2, Emergency Medical Technician, and a Bachelor's Degree in Biology. Joe's family consists of his wife and two children. Joe has been a paid on call firefighter in Coon Rapids since 2013. Joe, you have been chosen and trained to be a firefighter for this organization. In addition to responding to emergencies, your duties are many. As a firefighter, you are responsible to maintain your knowledge, skills, and physical abilities. You are also responsible to provide quality service to our customers. It will be your duty to respond whenever called. Your chiefs, your crew, and community rely on your abilities and professionalism in the performance of your role as firefighter. 
I know you provide many years of excellent service to our city. That said, we'll now have a formal pinning of Joe's badge, number 75, followed by him swearing an oath of office performed by Mayor Jerry Cook. So I would like to introduce Joe's wife, Amber, as the person he selected to pin on his badge and his kids. I, Joe Eisenschenk, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the policies and procedures. That I will support the policies and procedures of the Coon Rapids Fire Department. Of the Coon Rapids Fire Department. I will faithfully, honorably, and to the best of my ability. I will faithfully and honorably, to the best of my ability, protect the safety and lives. Protect the safety and lives of my fellow firefighters and citizens. Of my fellow firefighters and citizens whose care has been entrusted to me whose care has been entrusted to me. So help me God. So help me God. You are now duly sworn as a firefighter for the Coon Rapids Fire Department. Thank Congratulations. You. Any more fun stuff? No, back to the meeting. Back to the meeting, yeah. Uh -oh. All right. Next item on our agenda is to approve the minutes from the February 21st meeting. Your Honor, so moved. Second. Motion by Wells, second by Demmer to approve the minutes from February 25th. Any discussion or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. That motion carries. One abstention. Council Member Geisler. Sounds like they're having a big old party out there. <laughs> all right, we have one item on our. Con Thanks for staying, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we have one item on our consent agenda this evening, and that's to adopt resolution 17 36 requesting advance of state aid funding for the 2017 street reconstruction program and the uh, city staff is preparing for the 2017 construction season and is proposing to reconstruct approximately one and a half miles of municipal state aid streets as part of this program due to the continuance of our aggressive street reconstruction program we need to request advanced funding through MnDOT to cover the costs essentially we are borrowing ahead from the city's MSA construction funds uh, we the city receives approximately $2 million of dedicated funds per year for construction and maintenance of our MSA roadway system. But since the majority of these funds has been previously advanced to cover the 2013, 14, 15, and 16 programs, we are requesting another advance for 2017. The council is being asked to consider staff's request to adopt the attached resolution, which is uh, we're looking to reconstruct the streets 101st Avenue from Foley to University. 121st Avenue from Foley to University and Shenandoah Boulevard from 122nd Avenue to 124th Lane. Um, somewhere in here it said that uh, we're, we're like a year in advance. We're more than a year in advance, aren't we? Or are we just one year in advance? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we're currently, if you look at the resolution, we're currently 1.7 to the bad. And we get $2 million a year. So we're a little less than one year out. We have advanced for about seven consecutive years. We did the bonding last year. Uh, so this is just a way to get 
interest-free money to help sure. get our work done versus bonding. It's a beautiful thing. Yes, it is. Okay. So if nobody has any other questions, that literally is our whole consent agenda. Your Honor. Council Member Demmer. I move adoption of that whole consent agenda. <laughs> because it's easier than reading the number, I guess, of yeah. doing it one at a time. Second. Second. All right. Motion by Demmer, second by Wells. And the consent agenda consists of just the one item. And I think I did read the number, right? Resolution number 17-36. Mm -hmm requesting advanced MSA funding for the 2017 street reconstruction program. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And item six is to consider resolution 17-35, accepting donation of real property, 2245 Main Street. Um, this is the property adjacent to Bison Creek Park. It's 4.7 acres in size and currently owned by Shamrock Development. At the time, the Ashley Oaks subdivision was developed, which is those townhomes just to the east of this property. Um, and this is all west of Shenandoah Boulevard. Um, let's see, at the time, the Ashley Oaks subdivision was developed. Two outlots were deeded to the city for parkland. It was envisioned that the property at 2245 Main Street would eventually be deeded to the city as well. The lot contains a single family house that is in poor condition and has been vacant for several years. Most of the property is considered a wetland and is generally undevelopable. undevelopable. Um, so this is just accepting the donation of this property from Shamrock. And, and this is an area where it seems our sanitary sewer doesn't get up there anyway, so there isn't any way of these even being houses and then the county doesn't want driveways out onto main street there so this will all just kind of become extra parse extra land sort That's of correct. Integrated, into the park space. integrated into the park space much better way of phrasing it <laughs> all right so we want to make a motion on this yeah. council member wells uh, although there are some costs involved in this i think it's uh, pretty minimal for what we're getting, so I would mm -hmm. make a motion to adopt Resolution 17-35, accepting the donation of real property at 2245 Main Street. Second. Motion by Wells, second by Gasler, and that's a good point. I didn't read about that. Um, it's going to be about $10,000 to demolish the house. Uh, there's about $4,500 in special assessments related to infrastructure improvements, and we would also be responsible for the property taxes before the property can be classified as tax exempt, which is estimated at about $2,000. Uh, sufficient funds exist in the park improvement fund for these expenditures. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Can I just, Mr. Mayor? Oh, go ahead. Well, I'll start with you guys. My question on this is, I know it's designated now as property, but accepting this donation, does this property maintain or have to stay in that park designation and is perpetually forever? For example, if we needed an access for a fire road or anything like that, are we locked in in any way? Yeah, Your Honor, Council Member Skowiak, uh, there wouldn't be any deed restrictions on, on this property while Shamrock is donating it uh, rather than selling it to us. That is in, in part just due to tax uh, issues on, on their end. Um, it, it will be possible to use some of this land for some other public purpose if, if that or what was. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. I would probably would have said tax benefits to them rather than tax issues, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you still have something, Councilmember Johnson? I, I did have a question, and do I understand this right that we're we're going to end up picking up the property tax that is already owed in connection with this property? Yeah, Your Honor, Councilmember Johnson, there are some special assessments uh, on that property related to some street and utility improvements in, okay. in that area. And yes, we the the agreement we have, and and there's a copy of the MOU attached. Basically, they will donate us the property provided we uh, take care of some some of those other costs. So ar arguably, we're paying around twenty thousand dollars for this five acre property. What benefit do you see to that park uh, coming along with this property, especially if there, we're not going to have an access out onto Main Street? 
Uh, well, certainly in, in the short term, you know, it, it will likely just be passive open space. In the longer term, the park master plan does envision completing some of the trail loops in that park. Right, right now, there, there are a lot of dead ends there. It's not the most usable park, so in the longer term, I think we'd like to make some improvements there. It would be possible also to have some sort of trailhead or parking area off of Main Street so that it is a little bit more accessible. So those are some of the kinds of things we've uh, thought about in the longer term uh, for this area. But as of right now, in the comprehensive plan, it is guided for park and open space, as are all the other properties along there. We've acquired uh, a couple of the others in the last few years. So we, we feel it makes sense to acquire this one as well. All right. Thank you. To, to your specific question, there is, it says there's $2,000 um, to pay the taxes, which I assume will just be the May 15th and because the tax exempt kick status won't kick in until probably payable in 18 or something. That, that's right. right. Uh, the tax status for 2018 will be based on the, the use of the property as of July 1st of this year. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And we are at open mic. Is anybody here to address council this evening at open mic? All right. Yes, I will. Oh, all right, sir. Please state your name and your address. And I'll uh, just give you the first paragraph. Open mic provides an opportunity for the public to address the city council on subjects that are not part of the regular meeting agenda. The public is invited to express any concerns they may have which are relevant to the affairs, policies, or practices of the city of Coon Rapids, and remarks will be limited to three minutes. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, it was about the, um, did, did, did you just talk about the closure of uh, Foley Boulevard? No. Oh, okay. No, we'll be talking, I'm sure we'll be talking about that in other business. Oh, okay. So that'll be coming up then? Well, we're, it'll just be an announcement. If, if you have a specific observation you would like to make, why don't you give us your name and address and okay. then... Dave Thielen, I, I own uh, Select Eye Care in the, the donut shop on uh, Northdale Boulevard, 460 Northdale Boulevard. I'm just really concerned about uh, what's going on with that road. Um, there, it's closed from uh, now March 7th until July 1st. And how we're supposed to run our businesses without that road open. That's my question to you guys. And uh, I, I, I know it's a county road and no one wants to take responsibility for it here. But we need to rub elbows with the, with the county to get it done sooner than that. That's, that's, I mean, you could put up a, a house in three weeks. And it, it, they, they've had probably two years now that they've been working on, on that road. And it's, it's pathetic. And I, I'm thoroughly disgusted with the city and also the county with this issue. I've talked to them here about this before. Um, something has to be done. We can't run our businesses like this. It's just, um, we can't. That, that road's closed and we're out of business. And, 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 the, and the landlords just go, well, keep paying the rents and keep paying the taxes too for, for something that, we're, that um, we're pretty much getting screwed over on because uh, it wasn't taken care of when it was supposed to. That project has been there for a long time. And I don't know what the excuses are, but it, uh, it's, no, it's, it's a rotten situation to be in. So if you don't want us there, uh, I guess we won't be because we, we're not going to make it through those four months over there. And I'm not the only one that's complaining about it. So thank you. That was Select Eye Care and Continental Cafe, right, Dave? Yes. Nice, sir. Um, well, coincidentally, that brings us up to our item on the agenda, open mic report from last meeting. And at the February 21st, 2017 meeting, council received an open mic request to consider help for the businesses located in and around the Foley Boulevard and Northdale Boulevard commercial area. Uh, Mr. Scott Bromley owns several commercial properties located in or near the Northville Shopping Center. According to Mr. Bromley, many businesses in the area have seen a sharp decline in business over the years, which has been made worse by the recent reconstruction of Foley Boulevard. Mr. Bromley requested that the city look at potential solutions 
ranging from financial assistance to other marketing efforts that would help promote the neighborhood. Staff has had, I guess I'm done. Your time is up. Yeah. Staff has had some preliminary conversations about potential outreach strategies to help promote the area. Our communications staff indicated that on similar road projects in the past, the city has not typically promoted individual businesses due to concerns about favoring one business over another or the potential scope of, of such efforts. Nonetheless, staff recognizes that the Northdale and Foley area has a number of businesses which contribute to the local economy. Currently, there are no programs at the city level to assist businesses that are impacted by road construction. This would require additional discussions if the council wanted to consider such a concept. On an interim basis, staff can work with Anoka County to ensure there is adequate signage and access to businesses during reconstruction. On a longer term basis, staff will look at ways to raise awareness of the businesses that are in the area to help residents rediscover the retail opportunities that exist. Um, no action is requested by the council at this time, but it does, it does sound like it's up to the council to decide if we're gonna have a workshop on this and talk further about it. Mr. Stemmel, is your hand up? Yes, uh, All right. Council, if I may, uh, staff actually met to discuss this more from a communication standpoint earlier this afternoon, and uh, Grant Fernelius has a couple updates in that regard, if that's okay. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, sure, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, certainly, uh, Mr. Thielen's comments tonight are, are, are obviously very timely. Um, we have talked internally about things that we can do. Um, there's three things that we think we can we can do at least on a, a you know short term or inter interim basis. Um, one is to work with Anoka County and provide better communication in terms of what's going on with the construction. Um, Mr. Hammer just shared an email with me tonight that uh, Anoka County plans to start reconstruction or start restart construction on the 16th or 17th? 16th of March. 16th of March. So I think as those kinds of milestones and um, construction related activities take place, we should be pushing those out so that the public kind of knows what's, what's going on. Um, so that's one thing. We also have a uh, spring newsletter um, coming up. Um, in fact, we're gonna send that out on March 30th. And so we're gonna include some additional information on the construction so that uh, a broader audience, uh, all of our residents kind of know what's, what's going on in and around that area. And then we also talked about a, um, a summer newsletter where we can do more of a uh, neighborhood spotlight talking about the businesses that are in that area um, and you know trying to trying to promote um, obviously what is what is going on in that area it's going to be a challenge while that construction is going on I think we all recognize that we want to see those businesses um, survive during the construction period and, and, and certainly thrive once the project is completed um, there's no doubt it is a hardship, but we're going to do what we can to communicate with the public to, to raise awareness about about that area. So, Mr. Mayor, Councilmember Johnson, I, I would urge the council to put onto a workshop something to discuss with regard to the Foley project, um, not just for the businesses, but also for the residential properties that abut that project. Um, you know, that's my ward. And uh, you can't, I was going to say, you can't drive down uh, that section of Foley Boulevard that's under construction. And I literally mean you almost can't drive down it sometimes. Um, but without noticing that um, the area looks terrible. And ever since it was, it had to be graded to address some of the passability problems. It's created just a ridiculous amount of um, dust and debris and things like that that have frankly dirtied up the entire area. I mean, you drive down the street and, and you can see that all of the houses along that section of, of the county highway um, are dirty now. And those people are going to end up having to either repaint or power wash or address some of that problem and that's the same for the businesses that are, are in the area. I also think some of the communication has been lacking. It's part of the reason that I voted against the Joint Powers Agreement last week is that we, we have certain understandings with the county. We sign a Joint Powers Agreement only, and this is not 
uncommon, unfortunately, in my experience, and now in my third year on the council, only to then realize that after we have signed a joint powers agreement and essentially authorized the county to carry through with the project, that there's been either a lack of communication or miscommunication about expectations and when things are going to get done or when things are going to um, start. And, and I understand projects change over time, um, but a lot of the people in that area had no idea how long, especially the businesses, how long the project was going to actually take and shut down things and then they get this little note, you know, in, in the mail um, and nobody has talked to them in the intervening time period and they can't plan their businesses along those lines and I think because we've signed a joint powers agreement we have to take part in those discussions and take part in some of the possible remedy and solution. I would say it is not unprecedented for this city to give financial aid to businesses and probably the most blatant example of that that I can think of was when there was earlier uh, road work that was being done that, um, and I believe it was the Foley project, uh, this city voted to give some relief uh, to the restaurant that is at Bunker. Um, and that's when it was privately operated. The city ultimately undertook that the operation of that restaurant as a city-run facility, uh, but there was some rent relief and other relief that was provided to that. Uh, that business and if we can do it there we can certainly try to find creative ways to at least help them uh, first of all deal with this intervening time period and communication we can do better signage you know we really shouldn't be in a situation where the county is is and we're not involved in these discussions telling people to just avoid the area by taking the alternative route of University Avenue and taking them right out of this commercial district I kind of understand the message, but it sure doesn't help these businesses, and we have to play a role in those discussions. So I, I really think we need to get it on a workshop, and I think we need to start thinking about what we might be able to do in the intervening time period. It was a little easier up there. We were the landlord. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, other business come before council? Mr. Stemwell, anything uh, coming up? And you didn't even have your hand up, but I thought uh, you were asking. I was waiting. I thought maybe there would be some. I do have a list if you want me to. Perfect. Do it. Okay. Uh, we do have a dessert and concert series coming up on Thursday. It's the Minneapolis Commodores here at the Civic Center. Um, then I did want to make folks aware that we're going through a process to name the new park, which will be located at the Coon Rapids Ice Center. Uh, right now, the working title has just been Boulevard Park. We're accepting applications or nominations from the community right now. There's a form online. In fact, one of the main stories on the website is about this. And those will be accepted through May 26th. Finally, the um, Home Remodeling Fair, or the North Suburban Home Improvement Show, I should say, is this Saturday, March 11th, from 8 to 2 at the Andover Community Center, which uh, it certainly has a big hand in and participates with. So that was it Thanks. for me. And if somebody was to wrap that name suggestion around a check for, say, $500,000, could that one win? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we guys are. I just wanted to say in the, the last, I think it was the last week, we got the park hand flyer. Yeah, this one, this wonderful little thing. Um, so if you haven't seen it in your mail, go look in your mail. It's a fabulous piece. It talks about all of the great fun things that your kids can do this summer at the parks. There's lots of different programs, um, leagues, all kinds of great things. It was a very Not just well done. kids, older people too. Well, everybody's young at heart. Yeah, yeah. So, but lots of fun things coming up and a great resource to, to yeah. use. And, and that's what I thought too, because in the, in the end, it's got all of the dates for the upcoming events over the summer, the meetings in the park, the, the movies in the park, which will coincide for the grand opening of St. Creek Park, uh, the Friday of Labor Day weekend. Um, yeah, so it's, don't, don't just recycle that without pulling the dates out of there. All right, any other business? Hearing none, so we'll, we'll do adjourn. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Demer to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.